Um, my name is Jason Safford, and our company uh, is uh, Saplin. Uh, the parent company is actually Saplin Green Industries, uh, but today we're presenting uh, one of our exciting technology companies, which is Saplin Green Building. So I think this is the right slide. There we go. Okay. Just making sure I have my technology down. Um, so I'm going to take a little bit of a different approach in how we present today. I'm going to tell you a story. And that story is really about how Saplin came into existence. Um, Saplin is a combination of my last name and my business partner, Sylvan Lynn, uh, just so you understand where it comes from. Comes from. And um, around about 1999, 2000, uh, the world was a very different place. Uh, things were very exciting. The internet, which unfortunately is sort of the question today, um, was booming. And uh, this country in particular was thriving with a lot of technology. And then a funny thing happened uh, on September 11th, 2001. And uh, people like myself, who were young, energetic entrepreneurs, actually uh, were severely impacted uh, because uh, not only did the internet bubble burst, uh, but the world changed on that day dramatically. Um, I was very fortunate that um, uh, Mr. Lin, who had just retired from Pfizer, was an advisor on my board of my first company. And um, we got together and discussed how this impact was going to affect the future of not only ourselves and our families, but the world around us. And we decided that it was going to be important to uh, look at the future in a very different way. Uh, so we shifted our paradigm in 2001, and one month later we formed Saflin Corporation. Originally, when we formed this corporation, our idea was that we were going to buy brownstones in Brooklyn and put solar panels on the roofs and sell them back to uh, the displaced people who had been um, directly impacted by 9-11. Uh, if you've been to Brooklyn, you notice there are no solar panels on any of those roofs, so we weren't very successful in that first endeavor. Um, however, what we did learn um, during that time uh, was that this exciting world of clean technology and uh, what at that time was called alternative energy and environmental development was going to be the new Wild West of the future, uh, where a lot of us uh, were slowly going to uh, find our path. And so the last decade has really been about us uh, really going down that path in a position of leadership and along the way, finding uh, not only a number of very exciting entrepreneurs and engineers and innovators uh, and figuring out how to work with them, but additional to that, um, coming up with our own unique philosophy on how to tackle this new world. And so you'll like our next slide because uh, we're kind of going with the trends here. Uh, what we decided to do was uh, take something from uh, my childhood, which uh, some of you may or may not be familiar with. There was a cartoon on Saturday morning called The Super Friends. And so Saflin, over the last decade, has become uh, its own league of justice. And uh, our characters, uh, we've formed our own avatars, and, and we call ourselves uh, our, you know, our own super friends. And these are people committed to the cause. Um, I say that simply because uh, anybody who's been involved with clean technology over the last decade, you know that it has not been a very financially rewarding business, uh, although it has been a morally and uh, hopefully ethically rewarding business. Um, and we figured out as the League of Justice uh, who we were fighting against. And I'm pressing the wrong button. That's why I didn't change. There we go. Okay. Uh, so the League of Justice has to have its supervillains, uh, which are called the Legion of Doom. And we recognize that they had one very distinct advantage over us, and that was that they've been in business for 100 years. Very, very well capitalized infrastructure that we all live on and are addicted to today. Uh, so this is a challenge that we're fighting. Uh, sounds very, very um, overwhelming. 
And uh, if you look at it as an uphill battle, believe me, for the last decade, I feel like I've been pulling a 2,000 ton boulder up uh, Mount Everest. So during that time, uh, as we collected our group of super friends and um, uh, put our capes on and went to work, uh, we, we made a few achievements that we're proud of. Um, the first uh, was that uh, we achieved three years of growing profitability uh, these last three years, and this is during the downturn in the economic uh, crisis worldwide. Uh, we're very proud about that. Um, that's a huge challenge to undertake, especially uh, here in New York, and I'm going to um, sort of caveat uh, the gentleman before, uh, uh, specifically for Rock, uh, Rockland Business, uh, spoke about New York State. Um, Assemblyman Mark Butler and I are very good friends in Herkimer County, uh, recently revealed to me that over the past decade, New York State has performed worse than any other state in terms of business retention. We're actually ranked last, according to him. And that means that for those of you in this room and anybody who is interested in New York State, um, we're survivors. Um, we're, we're, in a sense, the end of the Holocaust of, of what's happened in New York State for, for business. Um, so th out of that, obviously, there is opportunity. And for those of us who uh, decided to start um, on uh, the, the challenge in 2001 or thereafter, um, consider yourselves very fortunate to be in business today and, and be proud to be a survivor. Um, so that being said, uh, we achieved preferred partner status with uh, uh, one of our specific manufacturers, and uh, we became the owner of Game Changer technology in both solar and uh, wind technologies. And by that, what I mean is that we've found technology that we know can perform without the government subsidies um, and return a profit to the investors. Uh, and that was our critical path because we approached this from a real estate perspective starting in 2001 and we still look at that as our financial model. Um, so therefore, our goal was to find uh, in each one of these solutions a 20% return for the investor. Um, and how we look at this in terms of uh, being able to deliver solutions is to um, compare it with the financial marketplace. If you can show me a guaranteed return anywhere near 20%, I will gladly speak to you and invest all my money in your company. Um, we're installed uh, with our solar technology at Harvard University, New Jersey Institute of Technology, and Stockton College, among others. We have a few breweries also uh, in that mix, especially with solar thermal. And our proudest achievement was in uh, 2010 uh, when the um, Recovery Act was put in place, uh, we actually stepped up and uh, volunteered to work with the City of New York on a job training program specifically for uh, green heating. This was um, uh, specifically the cool roofing, solar thermal technology, and um, tankless heaters. And our objective was to train installers uh, for these future um, sectors of business. Uh, we were successful in training over 200 people of which we employed uh, 30 ourselves. Of the 30 people we employed, 28 went on to full-time work within six months after leaving our company. Of the 200 people that were trained overall, more than 85% of uh, those people went on to uh, full-time jobs within six months of the training. Um, and we're very proud of that because I don't think that there's another program that has been that successful uh, with the city of New York or um, thereabouts in New York State. This is really why we're fighting. This is why Sylvan and I got together in 2001. Um, our objective overall is obviously to be able to help um, families be able to put food on the table for their kids. Um, that became glaringly deficient um, in the face of 9-11 um, as we all faced uh, new concerns, both in terms of uh, being able to protect our loved ones, uh, but also in terms of where our energy was going to come from and uh, how we were going to afford our cost of living. And we chose these as our weapons to fight the battle. 
Um, solar thermal specifically uh, because we're here in the Northeast and we recognize uh, the challenge with the rising costs of heating, uh, but also because uh, Sylvan and I both had an experience uh, individually, but when we came together uh, with solar hot water, uh, he's originally from Jamaica and installed uh, solar thermal starting in 1992 uh, in Jamaica and saw the uh, returns on the hot water immediately. Uh, I grew up uh, in Brooklyn, but uh, my family, in order to uh, be able to pay for their retirement home, installed solar hot water uh, on their little cottage shack uh, for the summers, and that was basically what allowed us to be able to take showers, um, you know, when we stayed there, uh, because there was no money to be able to pay for uh, uh, oil or electric. And uh, that became very important in understanding the future of uh, how we were going to live. Um, so a little bit about understanding the reason why solar thermal and wind became our two solutions is that here in the North Northeast, uh, we have uh, wonderful four seasons, uh, but the brutal of the four seasons, I know right now you're thinking is summer, but it's actually winter. Um, and uh, the volatility of our winter season, uh, which is growing even higher in volatility, is uh, a challenge for any boiler system. And uh, so therefore, solar becomes a wonderful free energy in the sky. Uh, this is our nuclear power plant. But the other opportunity with wind is that uh, during the winter season is when you have the peak wind currents. And so therefore, this allows you to power uh, any boiler system by electricity more efficiently because electric is 100% efficient. Um, so when you combine the two, you have the optimal efficiency for being able to provide a heating system. Uh, the other advantage with wind uh, as we know it in terms of all of the evaluated renewable resources is that as a free energy resource harvested, uh, if wind um, technology can be scalable, uh, it's our most viable opportunity at an industrial level. Uh, and this is what we also began to evaluate. So we went from the individual wind-solar combination to then looking at the scalability of wind on an industrial level. And we found that the current dilemma in the marketplace uh, was because we were running into the trap of uh, wind area resources and uh, just building bigger and bigger uh, turbine blades to try and capture uh, a little bit more wind and hope that that was what was going to make us successful. Um, so we looked at it differently and we said, what if we capture lots of little bit of wind? So we use smaller turbines uh, in an array. And uh, if you just change some of the um, philosophical differences in terms of how those uh, rotator, uh, rotors rotate uh, in opposite directions, you can eliminate a number of the uh, environmental concerns, both noise and flicker effect. And then you put screens over these um, uh, lighter, smaller rotors and now you've eliminated bird and bat kill concerns, or avian mortality, as, as uh, they like to call it. And those were some of the major impacts that uh, were important to us. But another thing that was very important, uh, I come from a background of what's called a low impact philosophy. And by scaling upwards and outwards, one of the things that we're able to achieve is less land area use. Uh, so we're maximizing wind area capacity and we're minimizing land area use because one provider now becomes the equivalent of three to four massive turbines that would be scaled out over several miles. And this was the other factor for us, especially in suburban communities where the concern was to the visual aspects of the wind turbine. So again, our goals with these technologies remain at being able to uh, provide to the customer a 20% ROI. Uh, whether or not that can be achieved, again, we've achieved it with these certain technologies uh, to date. Uh, but we are interested to any manufacturer um, innovator that believes that they can reach this plateau with us. Um, in, 
Second of all is looking at it in terms of energy independence. Uh, whether or not the technology is paid off within seven years is always a challenge with the financial community and the particular investor. But if we can look at it from being able to deliver an independence plan to the customer and they can have a real opportunity to see themselves no longer having to uh, work with the utility companies on a monthly basis and, and be beholden to them if they don't pay their bill on time, I think we have a real um, advantage in the marketplace. Um, our focus is on service level agreements. Um, this allows us to be uh, connected with our clients long term. And most importantly is, again, looking at uh, who we're fighting, our supervillains, is the fact that we're not going to put them out of business. Uh, what we're trying to offer is an independent solution on a customer by customer basis, um, thereby allowing people to have the choice whether or not they want to remain with the existing infrastructure and allow that to be upgraded or provide their own infrastructure and uh, continually maintain it on their own. So uh, there's a terminology to 800 pound gorillas, uh, but if you've watched the recent Avengers film, we're looking for our own Hulk. Um, currently, we're building a sales organization. We're looking at national and international uh, representatives and managers. In addition to that, uh, strategic partners, uh, people who have their own supply chains are looking to uh, widen them uh, with our solutions. Uh, we are looking for financial partners as well as project uh, partners. Uh, by this, I mean that our wind uh, technology uh, is cutting edge, it is game changing, uh, but it is at the prototype stage. Uh, there are a number of interested parties. However, we need uh, a financial partner or a project partner that's willing to step up and help us build the prototype. Um, in addition to that, uh, there are other opportunities um, and these are really within uh, the flexibility of being a portfolio management company of technology, not just a technology company itself. So uh, anybody who has not had the opportunity to uh, meet me here in the room, uh, this is my contact information. And for those of you uh, joining us around the world, thank you very much.